class of friends. Today the lecture which we are going to focus on is the tools and techniques used in qualitative research. Now qualitative research, so the points which I am going to focus on, very briefly I am going to focus on the historical background. You know, why this research became important. Secondly, we are specifically looking at focused group uh, discussion method. So what is the focus group is also a point we need to look at. Then how do we prepare for the focused group discussions? Why is it important? How do we prepare for it? How do we design the questions? How do we get the people or the community together? How to conduct them and how do we use the data in research? So this is the sequence which I am following. Now, very briefly, qualitative research is a challenge to all the fundamental principles, accepted standards of research. If uh, you remember research what you have studied so far, quantitative methods are used to quantify data. In other words, to structure them and to be able to say in numbers how many people are deprived or have access to something. Or how many people accept a particular point of view. Supposing I went to make, I want to study poverty because we are using focus group discussion in the study of social science research. Wrong. It can be applied to psychology but not focus group discussion maybe. But to understand, it can be used in market research group uh, to understand whether a product is very uh, we, we stopped at that, but the point is qualitative research questions the question of numbers. To give you very briefly how qualitative research differs from quantitative research, I would like to tell you if you were to study something like poverty, if you were to do it through quantitative research, what would you do? You would undertake a survey, you would count, you will tabulate, you will codify, you will tabulate and you will say 30% or 40% of India's population are living in your poverty line. Now if I were to study the same phenomena through qualitative research, what I would do is try to understand the meaning of poverty in the lives of few people. I'll give you an example. Like for instance, there was a particular incident. All of you know in your school, uh, the government of India, the government of Maharashtra, gave about 27 items to school students from Muslim schools, etc. You know, they get books, notebooks, very sad. And they get uniforms, they get bags, they get maintenance school. All of you are very well aware of it. And yet, children don't come to work. What reason? What could be the reason for that? Huh. Okay, the, the, the government is also going to encourage girl child's education. They give them uh, one rupee per child who comes to school, etc. Then, is it poverty? Poverty has many dimensions because some things are not even thought of by the, uh, the development workers that this policy makers that this is also an important part. A girl child may not come to school because she has to take care of her child, uh, siblings and co. One, it could be she doesn't have an underwear. She's a growing girl. And in the school, they may, be, may not be proper toilets. So you see the levels to which, and these stories can only come up when you listen to them. You can't go by numbers. 
must to understand all these things. To get the text, to get the experience of people, you need to look at quality research. Okay? Now, when did it begin? Historically, it's an early 20th century rebellion against quantitative data. Because human beings, the recognition is human beings are not robots. You can't program them. The sum, you know, one plus one you know makes two. But when you're dealing with people, there is something called the need to interpret action. There is a, does one plus one does not necessarily make two, it can make four. Because there is a process, an emotion, a cultural meaning which underlies social reality. Like for instance, uh, all of us know very well about the traffic signals. But there is a cultural symbol, so you will, if you say all cars stop at red lights, that is the currency which is given to you. That's the language which is given, a code which is given for managing traffic. But there could be the meaning below it also that some cars do not stop at red lights. It, it need not necessarily mean that it's a break in traffic signal rules. And why did red light get privilege over green light? Why did red light come to mean stop and not green light or blue light? Why was red light said? So these are some questions which underlie the movement of traffic in Bombay roads. So early 20th century there were movements, there were uh, political movements. I really don't want to get too much into it because we need to carry up also and there is time constraint and I'm sure you will get these parts out. Uh, but the important thing is that you need to understand interpretation of human action. In uh, TVs you see women wearing their, uh, you know, their like this. There's a cultural meaning to it. When a daughter-in-law uh, meets a father-in-law, she covers her head. There is a cultural meaning of respect underlying it, which you will not get from just saying how many women cover their heads as a respect. Okay? And so there is the interpretative first, uh, theories which come in. There is a critical theory. How do you know what you know at this point, critical at this point? Without understanding the meaning which colors social. Then, this is what happened. This is the second point. Now, this position grew more strongly as people's movements grew up in the late 20th century. After 1960s onwards, and people's wish, particularly after 1980s in social sciences, the understanding is qualitative data is very important. As a consequence, even if you are doing empirical research in social sciences, we do not stick to numbers alone. We use multiple methods. We use, even if it's a policy research, it's something for the government of India and they want to know about the situation of a particular set of people or they want to know that whether the policies are working how effective is the policy of school enrollment? Let's take it at that. They will definitely need data, but when we do the data, we do not just take numbers. We will not go by school records alone how many children are out of the school. That's much a census report. We will try to find out the reasons why they are out of the school system. And this reasons will help to improve policy. So we go to the next slide. A focus group discussion will look somewhat like this. It is largely, it can be used with any class of people. I have used it with scientists. I have used it with ground level classrooms women. Women living in tribal communities like this. In different 
class of March. So what is a focus group discussion? What is its aim? Basically, its aim is to generate understanding of a problem, of a situation, or to arrive at a certain consensus. Like for and it is also used in various other kinds of research like participatory action research, etc. We will not get into too many complex issues. But the point is, the understanding is, I told you about democratization of knowledge. The understanding is, I don't have the whole truth. All of you have some understanding and the important thing is to consult you. Because only then you come to an issue. Very simply, I will give you an example. Some years back, there was a government of uh, India project to start sanitation, you know, to introduce sanitation in the village, various villages of Maharashtra. Now, you automatically think, oh, it will help women, it will help women very well, so this is where you need to be locked and start. Everybody wants products and women do fall sick. There are these hypotheses without the proper toilet facilities. But when this research team went to the community, they did not ask, women did not ask for toilets. What did they begin with? They did not ask for what? They asked for schools for their children. Why did they not ask toilets for toilets? At that point of time, this is some years ago, they did not ask for toilets for the simple reason there was a whole culture in the village where women go, you know women are isolated in traditional societies, they are not allowed to mingle with each other. So the only time women could come together as a group and go out together was when they early in the morning when all of them went together to the toilet. So now you get, so where do you begin? You have to work it out. You have to spend a lot of time getting a school, identify other needs which they need and then make them recognize the importance of toilets in the homes. Otherwise that toilet will lie idle, it will lie waste and then we can say, you know, upper class people will always turn around and say, all these women enjoy doing this and they display this. We can make this sweet and which is not possible. So it is to generate, as you saw in the previous picture, to generate.